Jesus loves you more than life itself. He proved it by dying on the cross. Listen to what God has in store for you. Choose Jesus and life will be so much better. Thank you for tuning in to Walking in the Light with Zachary Bigley. As you listen to today's message, we believe God's Word will impact, empower, and change your life forever. Now, let's get ready to walk in the light. Bigley, this is Walking in the Light. Thank you so much for tuning in. I trust that the light is bright and you're walking in it. <laughs> I want to encourage you this morning, this afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this, to know that the gospel is simple. Do not please, I beseech thee, brethren, not to complicate the gospel. It's so simple. It's good news. It's always good. Even when it may seem harsh or rough, guess what? If you look at it through God's eyes, it's good news. God's only trying to help you and make you a better person. So I want to talk today about choosing the good part. You remember that story of Mary and Martha? It's in the New Testament. Jesus comes over. He's teaching the gospel. He's preaching the word, you know, doing what Jesus does. And uh, Mary, she was cool. She was just kind of kicked back and relaxed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, just listening. Preach, Jesus, preach. You know, she was probably his amen corner and uh, just sitting there listening, getting fed the bread of life. But then you had Martha, and Martha was a good woman. My goodness, she was probably every pastor's dream in the sense of she was serving, she was helping, she was getting things done, and probably doing a lot of it all by herself. You know, there's usually that that person in the church that just has that... Um, that makeup of just serve, 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 go, 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 work, work, work. And uh, oftentimes, unfortunately, they can um, be used to the point that nobody else really gets to do anything because they're just, they want to do it all. And uh, Martha was kind of like that individual. And here she is just sitting uh, in the kitchen, rather standing in the kitchen, working, cooking, you know, whatever she was cooking. And uh, she kind of got upset because her sister Mary was just sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him teach. So Mary, you know, just imagine you're at church, Sunday morning church, or, you know, the pastor's over at your house and he's doing a, a weeknight Bible study in your living room. And uh, you're in the kitchen cooking some food. And while your pastor's preaching, all of a sudden, you know, this lady comes in, interrupts the meeting, is like, hey, uh, preacher. I know you're preaching the word, you're doing a great job, but my sister Mary is sitting here on the ground listening to you teach, and that's all good and well, but hey, I need some help in the kitchen. Don't you see that I'm here working hard in the kitchen trying to cook you guys dinner, and no one's here, she's just sitting there helping. And Jesus' response, he was just probably, well, I think he was just so cool, calm, and collected. He kicked back, he was like, Martha, Martha, you know, you're worried about so much. He says, but Mary has chosen the needful thing. And that story just is so prevalent for the body of Christ from generations past to generations ahead, because that's probably going to be something that everybody deals with. But Jesus made a point here that in spite of all the drama, all the things that need to get done, because let's face it, life has a way of just creating urgency sometimes. But in spite of the need of having the food ready, guess what? Mary, Jesus said, chose the needful thing. She actually chose the right thing. And uh, so here you got an amazing story of Jesus teaching someone how to learn to simply rest patiently, knowing that God has got this whole thing under wraps. You know what? Probably my guess could have happened uh, if Martha would have came and sat down and not tried to create such big feast. You know, I, I bet you Jesus, he probably wasn't even concerned so much with the food. You know, Martha perhaps could have sat down, listened to the same words that Mary was listening, rested patiently, and then everybody got up and everybody pitched in in the kitchen. And I bet you that meal could have got done so much quicker than Mary making such a big fuss over having to have that meal done. So, Martha, let me give you a little breakdown of Martha. She was distracted with much serving. Her good works, as good as they were, pulled her away 
from the better, more needful thing of resting at the feet of Jesus and hearing his words. Let me ask you a question. Have you gotten so caught up in working for Jesus that you fail to really just hang out with Jesus? You ever experienced that? I have. I got not too long ago. Got caught up with just wanting to do a bunch of good things for God. Had a lot of dreams and ambition. I want to do this, want to do this. But God really kind of, you know, yanked the slack out of my chain per se and had me focus on two specific things for the ministry. And guess what? When I did that, all the peace, the rest, the frustration, the anxiety, it just is gone. Because when you're doing exactly what God called you to do and resting in it, there's really no pressure. There's no stress because you're not adding all these extra burdens. Jesus' burden is easy and it's light. His yoke is easy. Amen. But Mary, or excuse me, Martha was burdened with care. But Mary, check this out. It says in Mark eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Then Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Mary heard the word. She rested at the feet of Jesus. She ended up uh, just choosing the right thing. And, and Jesus says that Mary chose the needful thing. And guess what? It was a good thing. And it, he also said this. He said it would not be taken from her. So I want to encourage you today on this Walking in Light webisode broadcast, whatever you want to call it, to take time, sit, rest, and fellowship with Jesus. My goodness, make on purpose time for just you and him. Even if it's five minutes, take that time, get along with God, pray in the spirit, pray in your understanding, pray and ask God to show you exactly what is the needful thing for your life. Grab your Bible, grab a notepad, put on some music, Sit, kick back, relax, and let God speak to you. Write down what he says. You never know when you're going to come back over those notes and uh, need just that fresh encouragement. Amen? And when you're in that prayer time, don't do all the talking. Listen a little bit. You might actually learn something. Listen to what God says. And in that time of fellowship, God will speak to you. He'll give you direction. He'll show you things to come. So guard that time. It's precious. Guard your heart. Cling to it. Cling to that time with God, and then do whatever he says. Amen? I'm Zachary Bigley. This is Walking in the Light, and I thank you for tuning in. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day. <laughs> God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to Walking in the Light with Zachary Bigley. We hope you are encouraged by today's message. Be sure to tune in next week. Same time, same station. For more information on Zachary Bigley Ministries, go to ZacharyBigley.org. That's ZacharyBigley.org. Remember, at Zachary Bigley Ministries, we are teaching the Word, reaching the nations.